The death of a young Iranian woman in police custody has sparked weeks of violent protest in Iran and around the world. The UN and independent human rights groups have accused Iranian security forces of brutal suppression. Where does that leave attempts to restart the 2015 nuclear deal, which the US says is no longer their focus? Mohammad Marandi, professor at Tehran University and political analyst. So we all know that the whole process is politicized, but the Iranians are more than willing to solve the issue if the Americans are determined to have a deal. Dr. Morandi blames the West and NATO for aggravating the protests and a whole catalogue of aggression against Iran and other countries in the region. And as Tehran denies supplying drones to Moscow, whose side does he take in the Ukraine-Russia war? Mohamed Marandi, welcome to Conflict Zone. A couple of weeks ago, you tried to minimize the importance of the whole protest movement in Iran. You said it had died down after three or four days. Uh, that wasn't true, was it? Because two days ago and six weeks since they began, the protests were reported in at least seven cities, including Mashhad, Arak, Zahedan, Mahabad, and parts of Tehran. They're not dying down at all, are they? No, I didn't try to uh, do anything. I said the truth. The protests in the first couple of days were larger, and they were in different cities. And they were partially because uh, Persian language uh, media, in London mostly, but also in other Western countries, lied at the very beginning. And they claimed that uh, the young lady, Massa, was beaten to death. And so many people thought that this was a case of police brutality. I also thought that that may have been the case. But then later on, later on, the footage came out, and it showed that she had left the police van. She wasn't even handcuffed. She wasn't holding her head. She didn't show any signs of physical pain. She went into a hall and uh, sat there. And after a while, she stood up, spoke to someone, and then suddenly collapsed. The autopsy what showed there are many physicians involved, uh, that uh, there was no physical abuse. And even there's a clip of her father beside her body where he said that there's no sign of abuse. So Persian language media funded by Western governments and the Saudis, many of them based in London, were provoking the Iranian public. But after a few days, the protests died down. But then we had the rise of very violent riots. And that's exactly what I said. Well, let's talk about the, the violence in the riots. The UN Committee has had, UN Committee on the Rights of the Child has had plenty to say about that. It strongly condemned what it called grave violations of children's rights in Iran. According to reliable reports, it said some children were shot with live ammunition. Others died as a result of beatings. Many families reported that despite grieving for the loss of a child, they were pressured to absolve security forces by declaring their children had committed suicide and making false confessions. That's a pretty sick tactic for your government to employ, isn't it? No, that's a pretty sick tactic for the Western media and any uh, institutions that are under under the influence of the Western media to use. We're talking about uh, the UN Committee like on the, the Rights of the Child. We're talking about a UN lady, Committee. We're talking about a UN Committee let's not, reporting that. Let's, let, Tim, let's not talk about any UN Committee. Let's talk about the UN and how they put the Saudis on a blacklist and removed them 72 hours later. The UN has no credibility here. And this is, this is fake. The, the, the claims to... I, I've tweeted about this. Uh, the, the number of police officers that were murdered over the last few weeks at the instigation of media based in your countries, they are, uh, they're roughly 28 or 29. Some of them were shot with guns. Don't talk, let's not talk about fake news, all these young children being killed all over the place. That's nonsense. Show, show me the footage. Of why, these children why, why, being why is it nonsense? Instead of these organizations that are funded by the United States. Why, why is it nonsense? Here's an organization, that won't, here, here's an organization that, that won't be funded by the United States. This last weekend, the Coordinating Council of Teachers in Iran called for a nationwide strike to protest the crackdown on children. That same teachers organization said plainclothes police attacked 
the Shahed School in the northwest Adabil province. Ten pupils were injured badly enough to be hospitalized. Parents okay. of the children were also attacked. You really think that your government going after children and killing unknown numbers of demonstrators is going to stop this unrest? So you're withdrawing the fake claim. I'm that not a withdrawing young girl any claim. Was killed at that school, right? I'm not withdrawing because any claim, claim because I didn't in the make Western any media, claim. The claim I didn't make in the any Western claim. media, the claim in the the claim in the Western media, the filthy claim in the Western media, and the filthy claim in the Persian language media funded by your governments, your governments, was that a girl was murdered at that school, and then it turned out that that girl didn't even go to that school, and she died because of of a family tragedy. But your governments and those Iranian organizations or so-called Iranian organizations funded by your governments in the West make such fake claims so that the global public opinion would turn against Iran and they make those claims in Iran because you have more Persian language media directed towards Iranians than the Iranian government has. So when your MEK terrorist organization that's based in Europe and has a huge camp in Albania with thousands of people being tr acting as trolls there. They and these people, they fought alongside Saddam Hussein against their own country. They killed 17,000 Iranians during the 1980s through assassination attacks, through bomb attacks. These are the people who are spreading Dr. fake Mirandi, news alongside Dr. the monarchists Dr. and Mirandi, other organizations I, I notice, that are funded I notice by you your governments. I notice you don't want to address the violence um, and the violence which and the brutality of some of your security forces. Amnesty International. Of course, I'm, I'm Amnesty fine with addressing the violence. Amnesty International has reported widespread torture, severe beatings of protesters and onlookers, even sexual violence against women by your security forces. You think the people will forgive their leaders for this sh shocking brutality? No, people will not forgive your leaders for interfering in our internal affairs and for it's spreading someone misinformation else's fault, isn't it? and it's for always someone using else's Persian fault. language media. I'm speaking, Tim. I'm speaking. Don't try to run out the clock. So it's your Persian language media and your troll farms and your governments that are spreading misinformation, both in Persian and in English across the globe. The, the, the police officers that were killed in Iran, 28 or 29 police officers, as far as I know, during that period, were killed, people who were policing the streets. If, it, if such numbers were killed in your country, what would be the response of your government? But what, what your Persian language media was doing during this period was encouraging people, rioters, to attack the police, to get revenge, as they called it, on police. They were telling people to make Molotov cocktails. If Ofcom, if, this, if any of this was in English, and if it was directed to an English audience, Ofcom would shut down those TV stations within minutes. But in your case, you can use it against Iran because your governments are waging war against the Iranian people. Your governments don't give a damn about human rights. Your governments are the ones who impose maximum pressure on women and children in this country and try to starve them to death and then use media warfare against the country to create divisions. Dr. Dr. Mirandi, Dr. Mirandi, talk of running out the clock. Um, I've given you a couple of minutes, two, three minutes. Isn't it time to face facts that Iranians and a lot of You're Iranians, interviewing me. Iranians are angry at your government? The head of Iran's semi-official ISPA polling center, Mehdi Bahabadi, says a considerable majority of Iranians harbor anger towards the Islamic Republic, a factor, he says, which is at a dangerous level. Every time there have been widespread protests, they sub subside only superficially while the anger piles up. None of this is going away, is it? None of this is going away. And you say it's all the West's fault. Come on, Tim. We have, we have many polling institutions in Iran and Western polling institutions. And the popular legitimacy of the Islamic Republic of Iran is second to none in this region. Your despotic allies in this region tell more than enough about your governments. In Iran, just three years ago, less than three years ago, after your leader, your, the leader of the so-called free world, murdered General Soleimani. We saw how many millions of people went to the streets in Tehran. So let's not pretend 
that the truth is anything that it is. Let's, let's speak facts. Of course there's dissatisfaction in Iran. There's always dissatisfaction in Iran. You can go in a taxi now, five years ago, ten years ago. You can spend your time in Tehran. That's exactly the fact. That it shows the fact that in Iran, people can speak their minds. But can they do that in Saudi Arabia? Can they do that in m many other parts of the world? Can people like me to easily do that and get a job in your government, in your country? Why do you keep putting it out? Why do you play the what about game? What about in Britain? What about Saudi Arabia? Why don't we just stay with Iran? Is that so difficult? No, These I'm talking protests. about you. I'm talking These, about you. Yeah, and I'm because talking about you. you. We're work, not here to discuss you me work for a or government the West. That use chemical weapons. No, I don't work for we a government. Are. I don't oh, work yes, for we are, because you have no credibility. You, you do. You work for the, the, Ger the German government funds your channel. You think, and the German you think, government gassed you think, you think Iran. The German has, government gassed me Iran twice. You think Iran has so credibility don't talk, so don't, in the, on the international stage? Really? These protests that you said died down have now spread to oh, the absolutely. cultural elite. They you're spread not, to actors, Tim, broadcasters, singers, you're not sporting in our stars, people who are admired, followed, and have nothing to do with politics. Tim, where, where all these you're people not in our league. Bought up and incited Tim, by the West. You're not in our league. You're not in our league. Don't run out the clock, Tim. You're not in our league. Your government, the government that funds you, that gives you the opportunities to speak to me, your government gassed me twice. Where, where were you? You were working at the BBC back then. You were in your 30s when I was gassed twice. Where were you when they were gassing? Don't talk about credibility. You don't have credibility. Your television station doesn't have credibility. Your government doesn't have credibility. And the European Union doesn't have credibility. So don't talk down to Iran. You, like Joseph Borrell, you take care of your garden and we'll live in our jungle. You're entitled to your views, Dr. Marandi, but even among your own politicians, we're seeing the first signs of open dissent over the government's methods with these demonstrations. Former Speaker of Parliament, Ari Larijani, questioning the use of force, saying the police should not be used to encourage the wearing of the hijab. He's calling for a cultural solution. Iranian society, he said, needs more tolerance. Don't you agree with that? So you're admitting that in Iran we have open debate. So you're admitting that we have all sorts of voices in Iran. So you're admitting that we have different people who argue with Iran and fight with each other in parliament, outside of parliament, in government, at universities. Yes, that is a part of Iran and that has always been a part of Iran post-revolution. Not pre-revolution when your guys were in charge, but post-revolution. In fact, and this is something that will continue, but you can continue as you have been, as your colleagues have been, as Western media has been saying for the last four years that the Islamic Republic of Iran is about to implode, it is corrupt, it is unpopular, people hate it, it's collapsing. Of course, Iran, and paradoxically, it's also a growing menace. I don't know how, how you can have both at the same time, where it's, on the one hand it's unpopular, it's hated, and it's collapsing, but on the other hand it's a growing menace and a growing threat to the world. But for four decades now, Iran has been about to collapse, and I think for the next four decades, we're going to be see hearing the same wishful thinking in the Western media and Western think tanks again. Well, let me try putting the question again. Don't you think Iranian society needs more tolerance? It's that simple. Can I have an answer? Iranian society, Iranian society always needs more tolerance. Iranian society be needs better government management. Iranian society always deserves better. And that's what we have to strive to do. And so does your society. And your society needs more tolerance. And your society should show, a, and your government should show a bit of humility and apologize for the crimes that it has committed to my people. And people like yourself should show more tolerance and have a more open mind about those of us who live in the jungle. Oh, please. As Borrell says. Oh, please, don't, don't take the moral high ground when your government is supporting Bashar al-Assad in Syria. Oh, I you have know, the moral high of, ground. One of the biggest killers and torturers in the Middle East. Please don't, <laughs> please, yeah, you please, please don't take the moral high ground, Dr. Marandi. I think you'll find that's difficult. Your revolutionary oh, guard... Oh, I will. Oh, your I revolutionary will. guard... When you... Dismisses, don't run out the clock. Could I, could I, you could said I put a question to you? Could I put a question to you? 
Your revolutionary guard dismisses you, you already did. all the protests as sedition. Major General Hossein Salami, the sedition will be a stillborn baby and will go down in history as a disgrace for America. How helpful do you think that is in trying to address legitimate grievances of people? Don't make a point and then change the topic so you can get away with it. Your government, NATO supported Al-Qaeda. In 2011 and 12, when I went to the Western media and said that Al-Qaeda Al is fighting in Syria, they said, they, they said, these are conspiracy theories. This is nonsense. Well, later on, we saw WikiLeaks, whose head is now in jail, the most famous political prisoner in the world in, in London. WikiLeaks said that According to Jake Sullivan, the current U.S. National Security Advisor, he sent an email to Hillary Clinton, the head of the State Department at that time, that in Syria, al-Qaeda is on our side. No, it's your government, and your government said they're the worst murderers in hi human history and in contemporary history. Then we have the, the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency document of 2012, which said a Salafist entity regional countries allied to the United States are trying to create a Salafist entity between Syria and Iraq. Well, who, what is that? What was that entity? It was ISIS. And then General Flynn at that time said that, the, that they were determined and the United States allowed for that entity to okay, be created. Okay, you're, you're clearly not interested John in Kerry, answering. You're who clearly said not in interested in answering meeting. any questions. No, 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 no. You're no, not no. interested in let answering any questions. Let me finish. Let me finish. This is not a lecture, Dr. Let me, Maroney. No, let me finish. I asked you some John questions. Kerry. You don't want oh, yes, to answer it is. them. John Kerry them. said in a private conversation, you're afraid. You're you afraid. You don't want to you're, answer you're afraid. questions. Go on. Ask your question. My, my question is... No, you're is, afraid. My question... Afraid Kerry of you? said we let afraid ISIS advance really? on Damascus. There could have been a different approach by the government yeah. to this unrest, couldn't there? Like the one suggested by five leading Iranian economists earlier this month who say the authorities should listen to the demonstrators and prepare for fundamental change. Is there anybody inside the government who is preparing for fundamental change, in your view? First of all, when in, going back to the previous question, the guards and whoever and anyone else who spoke about sedition, they were not talking about protesters. So don't try to twist their words. They were talking about those groups that are funded by the United States in Iraqi Kurdistan, that they have military camps there, and they carry out operations in Iran. They're talking about those organizations alongside the no man's land in Pakistan, Balochistan, that fund, are funded by your government or the United States and its allies and carry out operations in Iran. They're talking about those MEK terrorists that your governments allow to function across Europe that have killed many thousands of Iranians and acted as foot soldiers for Saddam Hussein, who are active in Iran by their own, an own admission. So they're talking about that sedition. So don't all right, all right. twist you, what you've, he had you've, to say. You've had, you've had your say. You, you've had your lecture. And others, you've, you've flung around all the accusations. You haven't yeah, provided course. any evidence at all. Let's talk, if we may, about the nuclear issue, because you've been an advisor to the government on the nuclear issue. In your view, is this the end of the road for negotiations? We have the U.S. saying that they simply don't believe that Iran is prepared to do what's necessary to make the deal happen. In your view, is that the end of the road for the negotiations? Well, the, well Tim, who left the deal? Who violated the deal? Obama violated the deal when Iran was carrying out all of its commitments. Then Trump tore up the deal when Iran was carrying out all its commitments. Then Biden continued to pursue Trump's policies. So it wasn't Iran's fault. Iran began negotiating to make sure the loopholes that existed, that, that, that existed in the past after 2015 were mo removed so the, un the United States could not cheat Iran again. They negotiated hard, gained many concessions. Finally, on the last day of negotiations in Vienna, the EU gave a text that met a lot of Iran's key demands. And the Iranians took it home. They gave their uh, ideas about some of the problems that need to be resolved. And Joseph Borrell admitted, the US ally, Joseph Borrell admitted that the Iranian demands were reasonable. We thought 
at that time, we had a deal. But the United States delayed and then gave a response that was obviously intended to push things back, probably, we thought back then, because of the November elections. So the problem is not the United States. And by the way, Iran, uh, the, European, the Europeans and the Americans were constantly saying that it's almost too late. The Iranian nuclear program is crossing a threshold. Beyond this particular date, we can no longer continue negotiations. But they're all gone now. Where, what happened? It was obvious. They were lying. They knew that Iran's Dr. nuclear Marandi, program was the, peaceful. The they UN, knew that Iran was not developing a bomb. But it was all psychological warfare. The UN says you've still not provided credible explanations for the presence of uranium at three locations that were never declared, and you just say it's time to close the false file. Do you enjoy playing these kind of games with the international community? Well, Tim, first of all, it's not the international community. It's Western countries. You are not the international community. Your garden is only a small part of the international com community. The Iranians have said that we're prepared to respond to all of the questions. But the problem is that the IAEA, and that's, it's, the IAEA has a board of governors that is dominated by Western countries. And the head of the IAEA is someone that's always in the Western camp. The previous head of the IAEA, when he wanted to get elected, and let's go back to WikiLeaks, according to WikiLeaks documents, he told the Americans, if you put me in power, I will be in your camp on all major issues. So the Iranians are saying, take away the politics and bring in the technical experts, and the, and the issues can easily be resolved. These issues that you're claiming were given by the Israeli regime to the IAEA. And these issues go back 20-some years ago, when the Iranian nuclear program was taking baby steps. It was nothing compared to what it was today, what it is today. So we all know that the whole process is politicized. But the Iranians are quite more than willing to solve the issue if the Americans are determined to have a deal. You said you were asked why Iran is enriching uranium at 60% levels what the IAE said, uh, levels that are reached only by countries that are making nuclear bombs. And you say Iran does that in order to get leverage in the talks. Let's call that what it really is. It's not leverage. It's a threat, yes, of pure course. and simple. It's a threat, isn't it? Pure and simple. If you don't get what you want, you'll build a bomb, despite all the assurances that you've given that you don't intend to do that. No, Tim, you know, do you know what a threat is? A threat is when your government say all options are on the table. A threat is when your countries, your governments threaten to kill our people. That's a threat. Enriching at 60% is leverage. What your governments do are threats, and they carry it out in different countries. They destroyed Iraq, they destroyed Libya, they sanction Venezuela. Your, your government steals money from the Venezuelan people and starves them, and then says the government in Venezuela they mismanage. So you strangle people, and then you ask, why can't they breathe? No, your government threatens other countries, and your governments carry out those threats. So we take those seriously. But no, it's on the all, other it's, hand, it's when the Iranians the other at 60%, that are at they're only saying it to always tell the, the Europeans and the Americans to sit down and get serious. Dr. Marandi, much yes, controversy. Yes, it is your government. It always, is your government always, that's always everybody been else. harassing much, our people for over 100 always, years. Always, always. Much controversy. No, it's not everyone else. It's Western governments. It's always somebody it's else. It's not Asian. It is not Asia. It is not Latin America. It is not Africa. It it's is the your government. It is NATO okay. government. We got the Don't point. pretend the that you're the West. international it's community. The evil West. Much controversy, briefly, over the last few days about you can the call reports it what you like. Of, about the reports of Iranian drones being used by Russia in its war with Ukraine. Strenuous denials from Iranian officials. But the Ukrainians themselves have identified the devices as Shahed 136 drones. How ignorant does Iran think the rest of the world really is to try and claim that they didn't give them to Russia? Don't, 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 don't call yourself the rest of the world. I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm not in the foreign ministry. But a number of things, Tim, and I, and I speak on behalf of myself, your governments lied. You advanced westwards, you advanced NATO eastwards to the Russian border. Your government's carried out a coup in Ukraine. Your government supported right-wing fascists like the Azov Battalion, which in the Western media, it was 
discussed. They were saying before the events this year that, they, that this is a big problem in Ukraine. And they killed 15 or, 15 or 16,000 ethnic Russians in the Donbass region and in other parts of eastern Ukraine. Your government's provoked Russia. Your government allowed this to happen. You've gone through the list and you've swallowed Russian propaganda, hook, line, and sinker. Dr. Morandi, it's been good to have you on Conflict Zone. Thank you very much. Yeah, indeed. yeah, yeah. I'm a Russian propagandist. I'm a Russian propagandist. I've been gassed twice by your government, the government that pays you. So I, I think, and your government's done that in the 20th century before, apparently, right? Thanks, thanks so much for your time. Thank you.